Phillips uh, of the Stock Swoosh. She's going to be talking about short stocks for fast profits. And, um, you know, working from home is hard, but it's also great. So let me just give you a little bit of a, a lead in for Melissa. She's the founder and owner of an international educational company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. And the method she teaches, she owns it, she created it, and it's unique to the stock swoosh. The method is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. She's also the executive producer and creator of her own television show, which is titled Make a Million with Melissa. And uh, it's a what to do and how to do it television show on stock trading. So she appears on TV as an expert stock market analyst discussing the market, stocks, news, and world events on Fox News, Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS News Corporation, and I'm sure many more. So um, Melissa, let me see here now. I'm going to make you the presenter. I sure am glad you're here. We appreciate you coming and being willing to help people um, to... Uh, to know what to do next, right? So uh, let's see. Testing, testing, can you hear me? I hear you well. I'm gonna turn you into a, the presenter now uh, as soon as I can wrestle my uh, tabs around again. Wonderful, just checking here. What time do I have to so I can watch the clock? You have until 1.08 p.m. Eastern time. You're in New York, aren't you? Are I'm you still in New, New York? York? Yes, I'm in New York. I'm right yeah. along Central Park, actually. Oh, nice. Okay, now you like to uh, see the questions on the fly, right? I do. Bring it on. All right. All right, this is going <laughs> to knock your um, microphone out for a couple seconds. Just hold on a second. Are you there? Testing. And you're back. Now you're back. Okay. I'm going to mute myself and you take it away. Wonderful. Can you see the slide? Welcome, everyone. Good to see everybody. I see the slides. Here. Oh, great. What an exciting day to talk to you people. Why? Because the Fed is actually having a meeting today. And at 2 o'clock, the market is going to have a reaction. Reaction could be up. Reaction could be down. So... We're going to see volatility in the market. I will be long gone by then, but I will be watching my shorts and my shorts and some trades and my charts and some shorts that I'm in because again, today the market's going to have a move at two o'clock when Chairman Powell gets on and takes questions about what's going to happen for interest rates and the expectation for interest rates between now and the end of the year. So if you've been trading, if you've been trying to make a go of this for a long time, a lot of people start to trade, think they want to do it, lose money, and then they're back and forth pretty much for years. Could be five years, could be 10 years. I've taught people that are older than I'm alive that have been attempting to successfully trade the stock market for a long time and failing. One of the benefits that I can tell you of, you know, what I've learned from my experience, and I started trading in 2008, I learned very quickly that the best thing that I could do for myself to be successful, cut back losses, and also make more money was to hone in on one particular thing because you really only need one trade a day to be profitable so i'm looking to do one trade a day maybe two and i'm looking to focus only on one strategy which is gaps which we're going to talk about today and i also focus on shorts now sometimes i do go long of course we did long nvidia we went long nvidia we did options we did calls a lot of people were long nvidia some people were short nvidia some people were short nvidia now i don't think at this juncture nvidia is setting up yet for a short but today we are going to talk about shorts and if you have questions you can plop them in the room as we go along we're going to talk about shorting stocks for fast profits i do appear on every major news network as shelly said i talk about the stock market i talk about the economy i talk about all things related to the market if you have questions after today you can email me at melissa the stock .com. you can also call me at 929-3200 gap you can also follow me on twitter facebook youtube or skype i try to put videos some trading room videos, webinars on YouTube. I also put videos of New York. So actually Sunday was the New York City half marathon and I just started posting some videos I took of the half marathon, which was 22,000 people um, on Sunday and it was a beautiful day. So 
It's an exciting time to trade. It's an exciting time to be alive. And of course, we're just at the very, very start of the calendar year. We're only not quite three months into the year. So if you're not having a good year so far, you have plenty of time left to have a successful trading year for 2024. But the one thing that I think is so important before I start talking about what I do is that if you don't love what you do, you're, you're not going to have a happy life, <laughs> you know, and you really got to love what you do for a living. I mean, what brings in the income? Because you're going to do it for hours and hours and hours every day for a long, long time. And how I started trading, how I got into trading was I had a career doing mortgages, which, which I made a lot of money and I was good at it and it, everything was great until the industry started to change in 2007 into 2008 and I wanted a new career. And specifically, I wanted a career that I could work from home and I also wanted a career where I had an unlimited income potential, which, which trading brings me as well. So again, the only difference is for you to make a small money, beginner money or advanced trader money in trading is if you have more risk on but of course you can't put higher risk on until you know what to do but i love what i do right now and i train and trade quick and fast in the morning in my day trades in the room i do options which i'm doing short-term options which i don't have to babysit all day long so i don't spend anywhere near the amount of time working that i did with my prior career and again while people are working from home and that's great i've found i have friends some people are working more hours from home than they were when they went into the office since COVID. So again, you have to look at the quality of your time, what you're doing, how much money you're making, and of course you really have to enjoy what you do. So take a look at where you're at for the year. Of course, we're going into the Easter week. Next week is a holiday. You know, the market's closed Friday, Good Friday. This is a beautiful picture of Central Park. The cherry blooms, blossoms have started, have started in the park. Take a look at your year. How is your year going so far in 2024? If you're trading or if you're not trading, again, we're still in a very high inflation period, still very high interest rates. That hasn't changed. Even though they've said inflation is going down, I haven't seen it. I'm a consumer myself personally. So take a look where you're at for the year. What can you do to improve the next nine months from the prior three months that you've had? I put in here the stats. We're not going to go over every single trade in here so far today, but these are the 2024 year-to-date day trade results for our live trading room. Again, most of these trades are shorts. We're up 278,230 for the year. My average risk in the room on my day trades, which are on margin, these are margin trades. You need a margin account to take the trades in the room is an average of around $3,000 per trade. If you don't have a margin account, you would need a margin account to do these trades. So the stats are good. Our win ratio for the room is 74% year to date. These are great stats. Again, when I look at a trade, I'm trying to hone it down. I want to do something that has high odds. And again, we're going to talk about my gap strategy here in a minute, but I wanted to go over so far where we're at for the year. The options newsletter is a separate subscription. This is options trades. I risk more, okay, which is why the monetary amount I'm up for the year is higher similar win ratio but again 827 380 for the year the trains that i do for options some are calls some are puts okay i do prefer to short mostly in the room but again i'm risking an average of eight thousand dollars per trade these are options i'm trading options using my gap strategy based on momentum there's no fancy dancy option strategy here i'm buying a call and selling it again that's what we did with Navinia, and that i am buying a put and selling it and that's what i do with my options trade so for year to date for the options newsletter we're at 77 percent win ratio this is just fantastic the options newsletter really is probably my most popular product next to the golden gap class just because so many huge winners i've called in this letter not just this year but in prior years so so far year to date one million one oh five six ten for the year again my risk in day trades and options is different you could do one you could do both it's whatever works for you. Why people like options is you can trade options with a small account. You can open up a cash account. You do not need a margin account to trade options. And you can open up an options account with $2,000 at a retail broker. So you can take a small account and build it up. There's a woman, I'm gonna air the video. I interviewed her, she's a student. She started out the year in January $1,500 and her account is up over seven grand for the year trading options and nothing else. So again, that's how you can take a small account and build it up. Of course, you have to set your risk based on your cash size of your account. And we're going to talk about that more in a little bit here. And then again, any questions, you can plop them in the room. 
But going back to what I was saying, you need your brain to trade. Despite the fact that so many people out there think that you can plug some system in or plug some moving averages in or plug some indicator in and just not think and act like a robot, that's impossible. You are not a robot. You are actually a human being. You have emotions. You have a brain. You need to use your emotions to your advantage, which, by the way, I do when I trade. It helps me get out of something, hold something, add to something. It helps me make right choices, but I also have a very good brain. So you need your brain to trade. No computer is ever going to be better than your own brain. You have the ability to learn, think, analyze things. And again, my whole process is I get up in the morning and decide what I want to trade before the market opens. And doing that also takes the weight off me when I'm when I'm, when the stock market opens at 930 because I know if I like something or if I don't like something. And again, it's about looking at high odds. So how do you make money in the market? Again, use your brain, but you need a strategy. A strategy that does what? Determines who is in control. Again, we made money in the video. Why? It ran up. It got bought. Who was in control? The bulls. The bulls were in control of NVIDIA. Another good trade we had this year was a short. It was BA. We've been shorting it since January, the beginning of the year. Who is in control of BA? The bears. The bears are in control. In fact, BA is rallying today, but guess what? The bears are still in control. So how do you make money in the market? Determine who is in control. Uh, this was another one we did here, just looking at the bulls. This is Amazon. Stock close here gapped up. This was earnings. This was back at the beginning of February. Again, the stock closed at 160, gapped up here at around 170, and run up. Again, this is up today. I'm not sure exactly where it is. This is trading with the market. But who is in control of Amazon? The bulls. The bulls. So you wouldn't want to be short this. If you're short this, you're down. We also did Marvell. This was a short. Uh, we did this back. It was March 8th. It was a Friday. Who was in control of Marvell? The Bears. We shorted this. We made money. We got in. We got out. So if you get the direction right, I know this sounds so simplistic, but it's true. If you get the direction right in the trade, you can make money. You also got to get the timing right. That's extremely important for day trades and also options too. But so many traders want to do tricky, tricky, tricky things like short NVIDIA or this thing, that thing, or buy the dip, and they are in something against the control of what's going on, whether it's for a day or long term, depends again what type of trading you're doing, swing trading, day trading, momentum trading, options. You've got to have the timing right, but either way, you've got to get on the side of the control. And you also need to focus. So my focus is gaps, but it's also shorting. And so let's talk about what is a gap. A stock gap, so the opening price today, is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, but you can't short every bearish gap. You can't short every bullish gap. You can't go long every bullish gap. You can't go long every bearish gap. Again, it's not that simple. It's not that simple to plug anything into a computer and just go doink and then make money. It's just not. That's why you have to use your brain. That's why the people that are smart, that have a leg up, do well, and everybody else doesn't. Because again, people are mostly gambling when they're trading. They're taking a 50-50 crop shoot, and they don't have a set strategy that they use to enter a trade, which you need. You need. So this was another one we did here. Now let's talk about, again, what is a gap. So a stock gap from the closing price one day is different from the next day. Here's Roku. Roku's up here, closed here around 95 and change, gap down here in the morning at 77, and fell, dropped. Again, who is in control of Roku? The bears. The bears were in control. We did a day trade in Roku, but you could have bought a put. I didn't do a put, but you could have. Again, this stock fell. I'm just looking up here. It was around 95 and change. And then within two days, it was down at 66 and change. So who is in control of Roku? The bears. You would have had to be short to make money. But again, this is also a gap. This is a gap down, and we shorted it. How do I determine what I want to short? How do I know Roku is going to fall? How do I know BA is going to fall? Because I rate it using a checklist, which is what you would learn from me in the class. So I teach a class once a month. And in that class, I teach you my entries, exit, strategy, and the 26-point rating system, how to make the best pick every day. Because like I said at the beginning, all you need is one good pick a day. And then you plop on the size. And again, that's how it's done. Whether you do it as a day trade, whether you do it as an option is up to you and this type of account you have. But the rating system helps me determine who's in control. Because if I'm looking to rate a bearish gap and it doesn't rate good, then I say, whoa, wait a minute. I don't want to short this. It's not going to keep going down. Somebody could come in and buy it, go long it. Therefore, I don't want to short it. 
and vice versa then with the upside. But if I rate it and it rates good, I'm looking for 20 points as a cutoff in a 26 point system. If it rates 22 points as a bearish gap down, for example, I'm just gonna use BA or Tesla, we did that one too recently, that I say, wait a minute, I want to short this. I can buy a put, which is essentially a short, or I can short it as a day trade on margin. I like to do both. The reason is because I can get in and out of day trades really, really quickly and fast, and options I can hold for overnight moves. Now, this is BA. I don't have the last two days of BA in here. I know BA is rallying today. We did a lot of trades in BA. BA, as you know, if you've been watching the news, has said problem after problem after problem. Whether or not, again, you read the problems or not, or whatever's going on in the earnings in BA, I'm looking at the chart. Everything I do is based on the gap, but it's based on technical analysis or what I call advanced technical analysis. So many people that are trading the market, again, have indicators on their charts that they use to train that they think are going to tell them where to buy or where to sell. If there was anything that, that was that easy to use to do, no one would ever let lose any money in the market. We'd all own it and we'd all be rich, but it doesn't work out that way. There's only ever going to be a small percentage of people that are successful in the market, but that small percentage, you could be a part of it because there's billions and billions and billions of dollars in the overall stock market. But when I get back to the point of control, when I say control, who do I mean? I mean the institutions that are controlling the stocks, that take big positions, big sides. They've been dumping BA, selling it, dumping it like crazy for months and months and years, actually. We have never stopped shorting BA since, since COVID. Just before COVID, actually. 2019, we were shorting BA. I don't have a chart in here back that far. Uh, if we have time, I'll bring it up at the end. I, sh I should have put that in here, actually. But again, institutions buy stocks. They were buying NVIDIA. And institutions short stocks or dump stocks or sell them. You have to be with institutions. What do I mean? Hedge funds, big traders, banks that are taking positions in the overall market. And again, that's what you want in order to make money successfully. I'm just looking here, Sherry. Are the questions down in the questions section of the chat? I'm a little bit confused here. Yeah, you have to open up the questions box, I'm not the chat. Chat is now. for speaking to everyone, and questions are for them speaking and asking questions. Okay, I just realized that now. Sorry, it's been a while since I've used to go to meeting. No worries, no worries. Okay. Can't know everything. I, yes, you can. <laughs> but I didn't take my vitamin before this lecture. I was up too early. I'll have to take my brain vitamin when we're done before 2 o'clock. All right, here we go. Let's get into the BA. So we did BA. We did the 190 BAs. This was a good one. So Monday, 311, let's go back. I called the 190 BAs that expired on Friday. Hard to believe that was just a week ago. So here we are, 311. Stock close your gap down. Again, this happened over the weekend. It was a Friday to a Monday. We did the 190 puts. It dropped. Boom, boom, boom. Again, this was last week, and we did the 190s. So again, sometimes I call it at the strike, sometimes I call it away from the strike, where I want it to plop, drop into the strike. One of the reasons this was such a good trade was not only because the momentum was down and we got it and it happened fast, but we had the follow through and a gap the next day. Stock close to your gap down, open, dropped. You could have got out of the first day if you wanted to. You could have held it in the next day. This was one and I did not do this, but you could have held it into the very, very last day. I did not do that. But you could have, and I don't think that makes sense to do that when you're up in a trade. Anyways, the cost was ridiculous because we did it far away from the strike. Cost was $1.45. Again, 60 contracts, $8,700 risk sold at seven. Profit was $33,300. This was almost a 400% return on investment. Remember I was telling you about the woman who has really had such a strong year with a very, very small, tiny account. She has been doing some of these BAs. And as you can see, not every trade that I do is almost a 400% return investment, but some are, some are. And the thing is, if you can get some of these, it really takes you to the next level because we do have some trades that lose and you need to cover the losers. You have to have number one, more winners than losers. And again, we have more than a 70% win ratio. And then you gotta have some big winners because if you don't have the big winners, you're not gonna get ahead like you want. And again, this was a nice short, but this is the newsletter. If you sign up for this, you get the trade, the strike, the expiration date, the put, and I have the targets in the letter as well. Now, getting back to what I was saying, we were starting to talk about this. So last year, we were talking about this, fall of the year. Remember, the market was rallying really strong, November, December, woo, the market was taking off like a hot cake. Everyone was convinced five rate cuts in 2024, this many rate cuts, March, we're gonna have rate cuts. 
I never believed that. I didn't think that. I really, I, we, the inflation has been going down, in my opinion. And again, I'm a consumer, like just like you. I didn't believe it. I don't know if he's going to say anything today to indicate otherwise. I don't think we're going to get, now they're saying three, three rate cuts. I don't even know if we're going to get that. What if, what if we don't get any? Again, he may not give any indication because it's an election year until June or late till September. But if he says something today that gives an indication that we will not get three rate cuts this year or even two, the market's going to sell off like a hot cake. And again, right now, the market's back and forth in a range since the beginning of the week because we're waiting for the Fed today. My whole point is you can't really rely on the economic data or even fundamentals to make decisions because if you listen to the commentary last year, you swore up and down that they were going to lower rates five times this year. Everybody now knows that's not going to happen, but it's built into the market that something's going to happen with rate reductions this year, three minimum. And again, I'm not going to be surprised if it doesn't happen at all. Now, we were talking about day trades and why I like to do day trades and we were talking about trades on margin. This was a day trade on margin. What is a margin account? A margin account is you go to the broker and you open up an account. You can get 10 to 1 margin prop or you can get 4 to 1 margin at a retail broker where you're going to take the train and 4 to 1 means you don't need to have the exact cost of the stock dollar for dollar in cash. So we entered the CN short. Here was the gap. Stock closed here, gap down, open, rallied, dropped. So again, it was up here around 62 and change, gap down here around 53 something, open and fell. We shorted it. We got in, got out, and again, this was a day trade. Entry was 53.60. We exited the trade at 51.70. Every trade I take, I'm doing to do what? To get momentum to the downside. Again, this was a short. So I rated this gap and I said, wait a minute, I think this is going to sell off on the day. And I shorted it. You could have bought a put in here. We didn't do a put, but you could have. Down here's the volume. And again, one of the reasons I like day trades is getting in and out fast. This was March 7th. So anyways, $5,700 profit, very, very quick in and out is one of the reasons, again, why I like to do day trades. But again, you have to have a margin account for that. I'm showing a smaller risk, a beginner risk. You could have taken 1,000 shares, so you would have needed, what, $53,600 in buying power. That's not cash. Why? Because the broker is going to give you the margin and again at a prop place on 10 and 1 margin you would have needed around 5400 bucks and you could have done this trade and you could have made 1900 dollars. so this was a nice trade again even to do with a smaller risk stock close here gap down open rallied and we got the short this has continued i saw this later i kind of wish we had done this another day uh but i didn't do this another day but we did it the day it happened but how did I know to do CN? How do I know to do BA? How do, my, how do I know how to do anything when I get up in the morning? Success requires a plan, no matter what you want to do. If you said, I want to go on an exercise program, I want to lose this much weight, I'm going to go on a diet, I'm going to learn how to play the piano, what, I'm going to learn how to golf, something you want to do that is a goal for yourself, whatever it is, you need a plan of action. I'm not sure why people think that they can get up in the morning or trade the market or take ideas from strangers without having any reason or knowledge of what they're doing and make money when there's nothing else out there that you could do that's a goal for yourself, a personal goal, a career endeavor without having a plan. It makes no sense. I guess it's just the lure of the stock market that people think that you can make money buying a stock and selling a stock without knowing anything about it. And while sometimes that happens, you've seen that happen with the Reddit stock. Sometimes, this is a couple of years ago now, when some of those stocks had the burst, but then they had the bubble and they exploded and they've never gone back that way. No other stock has worked out the way that they wanted. People got wise to those situations. And as many people that lost money, there were way more uh, there were, I mean, the people that made money, there were way more that lost money because some people bought some of their stocks near the highs. And then even with the splits, they just tanked and they basically are dead. And we haven't traded any of this. So again, it sounds exciting to make money as a trader, but you really still have to know what you're doing. And it's not any different than any other type of career that you would have. No one would give you uh, a stethoscope and go in and say, wait on this patient if you didn't go to medical school for 12, 14 years. You, you need a plan. You need to learn what to do. You need to use your brain. I can't stress this enough. And a lot of traders want to whine and moan, I don't want to use my brain. I want to do No. As soon as you accept the reality of the situation and take it upon yourself and actually be happy that you can do this, then you'll realize that you have the ability and you will gain the confidence 
and you will start to believe that you are going to do better than the guy next to you because you've finally realized that you do have to use your brain and you are going to use your brain and you're going to learn it and you're going to get good at it and you're going to practice it. Again, my father's a golfer. He golfs a lot, you know, in season. Some years he golfs more than others. The more he's golfing, the better he does. So again, trading's the same way. The more you do it, the better you get. And that's one of the classic mistakes a lot of traders make. They're in and out doing many, many different things while they're trading. They're doing futures and Bitcoin and options and this thing. They're doing too many different things. I've gotten good at trading gaps. And even when I do options, it's based on my gap strategy, on the criteria of the 26 points. Everything I do is based on gaps and I focus on shorting. So that's how I know where stock's gonna go in the day. I use the rating system. Again, here was the BA. We also did BA back here. It was earlier in the year. We started the year out with the BA. Getting back to this, we had a trade we were in back at the beginning of the year in BA here. And then the stock ended up going down here. We got this. Again, this is the benefit of doing options. You could be in a, in a stock. Again, if it goes your direction overnight, took a couple of days, poof, this guy went down here and it fell, fell overnight in the gap. Stock closed your gap down. We were ready in the puts. And again, it was profitable. It was very, very profitable because it fell way through the strike. We also did this one here. It was another gap down in BA. Stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. You could have done a day trade here. You could have done a swing trade here. You could have done a put. Again, I'm not doing swing trades, but again, that's because we're doing options. But you could have. You could have with that. But anytime you take a trade, you want to weigh the pros and cons. Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? Every time you take a trade, you must put the odds in your favor. Otherwise, again, it's a 50-50 crapshoot. You're gambling. Right now, the market is a 50-50 crapshoot at 2 o'clock because we don't know what Jerome Powell is going to say. We have no idea what he's going to say. And even if we think we know what he's going to say and he put out the statement, he's going to answer questions, and we don't know what he's going to say to those questions. So we really don't know, okay? So it's a 50-50 crapshoot if you trade today at 2 o'clock while he's talking because the market could spike up, then it could fall, and vice versa. We'll pretty much know afterwards into the close 4 o'clock and then into tomorrow to see how the market is gapping. But you can trade options and you can day trade gaps. Again, I think it has to do with the size of your account, your experience if you like options, if you've been doing options for years but you don't have a good option strategy then you can just sign up for the newsletter and start trading. You don't have to learn my system to sign up for the option subscription. You do have to take my class in order to join the room. This was another one we did, Tessa, and I've been watching this as well. Strike was 190. This was back on Tuesday the 20th. I called the Tesla puts that expired on Friday. Always doing the Friday expirations. Even when we did the market, I'm not doing the daily markets. I'm always building a cushion. And sometimes I call it out a week or even a week and a half, depending on the time frame. This was super duper cheap too. For Tesla, for this stock, $1.75 for one contract. You could have bought one. Anyways, we'll look at the chart in a minute. 50 contracts, you could have made 11250 6, risking 1050 could have made 1350 Again, this is how to take a small account and build it up, okay? Now, let's look at the Tesla. 220. 220 was here. Here. Stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. No, not 220 was the date. I'm sorry, 190 was the strike. 220 was the date of February. Take it over. We did the 190 strike. That's why it was so cheap. See, right there. Again, that fell into it. Going back to the control. Who's the control of Tesla? The bears. Why? This thing, that thing. You can talk about it. You can go over it. But the bears are in control. What happened over here with Tesla? Again, we did this one too. This was earnings. Right now, it's the end of earnings season. A couple of earnings out this week. Then we have the holiday week. And then, boom, we're back in April. Starting off the month of April, and earnings season starts with the banks which is tax week, actually. Earnings season is a busy time to trade. Everybody, that, anybody that owns stocks is watching the stocks during earnings season. You get a lot of volatility, a lot of volume. And again, we're going to get that this week because of the Fed today. But April is a busy time for earnings. This was a Tesla earnings. Stock closed down here around 2.05 and change. Gap down here in the morning. Open, drop, fell. And this was a nice short here. You could have bought a put. You could have shorted it, again, as a day trade. So who is in control of Tesla here? The bears. Who is still in control of Tesla? The bears. The bears. Any questions here while I'm going along? Joan's asking a question, but I don't think that's for me. I don't know. No, Maybe I'm going to get that. <laughs> okay. 
Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, it's the American dream to become rich, successful, and financially independent. Everyone wants that, but do you have a plan to make it happen? You know, so a lot of people are retired and want to trade on the side because their Social Security retirement income is not helping them right now even pay their normal bills because of the cost of inflation and high interest rates. So things are different. Times have changed. And again, a lot of these economic situations are completely out of your control. You have to take it upon yourself. And again, whining, complaining, wanting things to be different, it's not going to change the situation. You can make a difference when you go vote at the ballot box, but other than that, there's nothing you can do. You have to take it upon yourself to make choices about your finances, and then, of course, to go into it and actually say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to improve my financial situation. I'm going to be in a better place three months from now, two months from now, by the end of 2024. And again, the only way to do that is to make a decision what you're going to do. You're either going to get a second job, you're going to get a part-time job, or you're going to trade the stock market. But you're not going to make money if you don't know what to do. And again, you're not going to make money if you're using a strategy that fails, it doesn't work. So many times that I, I feel sad for people, like they're doing a strategy, they're like, I know this works, but it's just me. I'm not disciplined, it's me, it's me, it's my fault. That is such crap. Even with, <laughs> if you have the worst discipline in the world, the horrible, you would have made money in some of these trades I called this year because they were so big. So don't blame yourself. Sometimes you do make mistakes, that's true. If you got, don't size yourself consistently, that could be a mistake. But even if you screwed up a trade so badly and you missize yourself, you would have made money in that BA put, for example, when it dropped like a rock. So, I mean, again, sometimes people just get so internalized and they want to blame themselves. You're not doing yourselves any favors by being negative on yourself. You have to be your own positive self. You have to be your own cheerleader. You have to help yourself get ahead because no one else, quite frankly, even cares. You're the one that has to make it happen for you. There's too many people in the market that want your money and want your cash, and they're going to take it because when you're going long, BA, I'm shorting it. I guarantee you. So... It's about who's ahead and who's the person that's going to get the cash and who's the one that's going to make the best choices. Um, somebody's asking a question. Timing, uh, timing for the day trades is on the one minute, um, but everything I do with the points is on the daily. Um, what do you mean risk to reward low? I don't know what you mean by that, Sam. I'm looking to make one to one. So if I risk a thousand dollars, I'm looking to make a thousand. This is a low risk to reward to you. For the options, 129% return investment, you think that's low? I don't know what planet you're living on. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you for that one, Sam, or whoever said that. As far as this in here for the CN, when I'm doing the day trades, I'm looking for one to one. In options, I actually think 50% return investment is good in an option, but I'm trying to get 100%. I don't know why you think this is bad. I think it's fabulous, but more power to you. <laughs> um, if you're risking $1,200 and you're making $1,900, you don't think that's a good trade? I don't know what to tell you, Sam. Well, keep looking then, <laughs> is all I can say. Anyways, all you need is one strategy and one focus. And for me, it's about gaps. So again, it's also about the consistency. Okay, the consistency. I had the stats at the beginning of the year. When you're looking to take a trade, you need to have more winners and losers. Again, for every 10 trades, figure seven and a half are going to win and two and a half are going to lose. Okay? So again, you're always looking for something and you want to take a trade and you want to win as many days as you can. That also helps your confidence level. Again, green, 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 green helps your confidence. I always tell people right after the class, right after they start trading with me, that they should book profits early because you, you want to just feel that sense of green, especially if you've been trading for a long time and you've been losing. So again, let's talk about gaps. Gaps are the most powerful show of price action in a chart. Gaps have large moves. Gaps can move up or gaps can move down. But some of the biggest momentum moves in a daily chart come from a gap. Again, we're always looking for momentum. So I'm really not scalping. I'm looking for a big move. Again, the big trade, the big move in the chart. Here is Marvell, stock close here, gap down, open, dropped. Now again, I focus in the morning on the day trades. While I didn't do a put in this, I could have. And if you did, actually, you would have made more. But I got in and out quickly. That's what I always do with my day trades. I'm always looking for the fast moves and I'm always looking for institutional money in a gap. 
There is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock and it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power and money people, of which there is actually a lot of in the market. Again, we were talking about the control, who's in control. And why short? Why do I like to focus on the short side? Why is shorting so profitable? Again, look at the way Marvell fell. Look at the way BA fell because of panic. So again, it's like if I'm, I live up high in a high rise building in New York, if I open up the window right now and if I throw a ball down in the bottom of the street, again, it would, it would happen very quickly like that. It would land on the street and it would take no effort or energy on my part. I could just push it out the window and it would fall down. If somebody was on the street and they were trying to get that ball, throw it up to me at the window, it would, they wouldn't get it up. It would be impossible. They'd never be able to get it up to me at the window. It would never, ever happen. Even if they were great and could throw a million miles, they'd never make it. So it is very, very easy for stocks to fall. It takes no energy and no effort at all. And again, it's because of panic. When people are down in trades, they panic. It's something called panic buying. That's very, 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 very rare. We did see that in a video. We played it. We were long it. People were shorting it. We were long it. We kept going long it. Again, I'm off that now. We're not in any NVIDIA trades, but that was rare. It's rare to see something called panic buying, but you did see that with that stock. Most of the time when you see panic, it is in a short, okay, when something is selling off. And again, here is a chart of Tesla. Again, this has had a beautiful sell off. This was back at the beginning of March, actually started out the year. Stock close here, gap down. You could still be in this. You could have done a swing trade in this. You could have done a long-term put in this. You could still be in this. This has done nothing but fall. And again, we're in uh, Tesla. We're talking about the month of March, not just since the beginning of the year, but really since March as well. So think about it. If you think about it conceptually, using your brain, you're like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. I can see why things can fall so quickly. I get it. I can see why shorting could give you an advantage and, and it all makes sense. And it also makes sense when you think about the control. Again, who's in control? Because if you want to have more winners and losers, which I do, then you need to go with the direction of the control. The fact is that making money trading is fun. Several thousand dollars in a couple of minutes is a heck of a lot of fun. To be in an options trade and get up in the morning, be up a lot of money when, when they're open, you didn't even do anything but go to sleep at night and get up and take the train is a lot of fun. But you have to be accurate. The accuracy counts. Any, even people that don't know what they're doing, like we were talking about the Reddit trades, made money in those trades without knowing what they were doing. There was no strategy assessment to, to them, but they made money from dumb luck. Anybody can make money from dumb luck. It's the consistency. It's the only way you're going to stay in this business. It's the only way you're going to be able to stay, have a longevity and continue to trade. Otherwise, you're going to be trading, losing, and refunding your account all day long for years and weeks and years, and that gets tiresome, and it can run you down. And again, that's where many people have gone through and then they get into all that negative pattern because trading really at the end of the day isn't gambling. You have to put the odds in your favor and it can't be a 50-50 crapshoot. If you want to gamble, go on vacation, go to Atlantic City. You know, I live near Atlantic City. Go for the weekend, have a great time. Go to Las Vegas, see some shows. Trading is something you have to take seriously when you do it. And again, for me, I like that morning time period. You get the biggest moves in the morning, the biggest momentum in the morning, and I'm sharp in the morning. I'm an early morning person. I get up to the prep work in the morning, and we're done training usually by 10 a.m., 10.15 in the morning. And then, again, if I have an option on, I'll check it later. Like, I'm going to check stuff today after 2 o'clock. I'm going to check and see what happens between 2 and 4. But I don't sit and babysit my options trades all day. So you pretty much have the afternoon for the morning trading in and out and done and then the rest of the day to yourself, you know, and you can look at your trades and check them before the close. So everything I do is based on the Golden Gap rating system, the checklist. I go through the 26 points, but you don't need a perfect score. It's 20 points or more. I use one strategy daily to stay consistent. And again, it's the rating system. Here was another gap that we did. Just want to show you. Stock close here, gap down. This was in February. Again, who was in control of the PANW? The bears. The bears. So I rated it. This very well could have rallied here the day that we shorted it. We shorted it. We got in, got out. Done. Boom. And again, that's all you need. One trade. One thing to make money and be done. And again, like I said, it's the concept of the panic and the trading fast and you can be done because ultimately it's about working smarter, not harder. Whether you have another job on the side, whether you're retired, 
but it doesn't even matter. Again, I worked so many hours doing my mortgage job that I didn't want to have another job where I would be working seven days a week, you know, 80 hours a week. I had real estate agents calling me on Saturday, Sundays, holidays. I wanted a different career. And again, if that sounds like you, if this is something that you might be interested, then you can reach out to me because I don't trade for six and a half hours all day. The trading room opens in the morning at 9 a.m. We start trading between 9.30 and 10 and we are done. And that's it. That's it. I don't trade all day long. The more you trade, the more losses you're going to have. And again, you only need one trade a day to be in and out and make money. So getting back more to the philosophy here, a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market stocks creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it isn't, it is. Now, I have a whole week of trades in here just to show you. These were all day trades. These were no options. This is one week of trades. Again, fantastic results here, risking an average of $3,000 per trade. On March 4th, we did W Day. We did Target. We took one stop, redid it. Then we did JWN short. We looked at Foot Locker, which worked really good, but we didn't do it. It opened too late for me. We did CN and we did Marvell. So 21380 for one week of trades with an average risk of 3000 These are trades on margin. This wasn't any options. I'm just going to quickly go through these to show you the charts. 3 4 was the W Day here. Stock closed here, gap down, open, drop. We shorted it. And again, I call the trains live in the room. I call the entry, stop, and the exit. If you want to do the trade, you would do the trade with me. Okay? Again, you will choose your sizing. You want to risk 1,000, 2,000. How many shares do you want to take? Again, this was a little pricing, but you must have a margin account anyways to do W day. So profit on W day was 2,900. That was Monday. Tuesday, we did the target. Actually, this was a long. We got stopped in the target here, lost in the first trade in target, retook it, did an ad. This is an advanced concept, but anyways, nice trade in the target. Really, really liked it. This was a long, this was a bullish gap up. Stock close here, gapped up, rallying. This just so happened to be the best gap in the day, so we went long. Again, sometimes we'll go long. Not all the time, but sometimes. Then we did the JWN. I got out of this, my target was 18, it kept going. This came all the way down to 1750 and change, but again, I got in and out, quick and done. Entry was 1860, again, got out at 1806, boom, made the money, done. And then we did the CN, which we talked about here. Again, 5700, we talked about that one. This was on the 7th, and then Marvell was on the 8th. We did this one, 2140, and that was the week. So again, it's consistency, 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 consistency in your risk per trade, the strategy you're doing, we're mostly shorting, and again, one trade a day, and again, I did two in target because we took the stop and then we retook it, okay? Just basically, again, that's something that you can think about if you want to do a retake or not and how many trades a day that you want to do. Most of the stocks I would say that we trade are anywhere between $25, $30, and $100 a share. But sometimes we will do think trades on margin that are over $100 a share. But it is really just about chunking it out. You take the trade, you get the momentum, you get out. And again, I'm calling the trades live in the room. You could do the trade with me. In order to join the room, though, you have to do the class. But the options, that's the newsletter that you can sign up on your own. Again, how do I know ahead of time where stock's going to go? I rate the gap. I use a 26-point checklist. That tells me who's in control, the bulls or the bears. Again, if I'm shorting, i got to get in with the bears. Or you buy a put, which is, again, the bears are in control. It tells me what to trade and what to look for every day. So the key to getting big trades, good profit, good risk to reward, good return investment, consistent profitability, more winners and losers, is momentum and big moves. And again, why I like to do shorts is because we get big moves in shorts. Again, because the same philosophy where, like I said, panic. When I trade, I'm looking for momentum. So basically, I'm a momentum trader, and that's how I'm doing the options too. That's how we did NVIDIA. Again, NVIDIA was a call, but I'm just talking about it because that was so popular to do. But anyways, trading momentum gives me an edge. It will also give you an edge. So many day traders are looking to risk you know, 50 cents to make five cents. That I would call a scalp, and I don't trade like that. Again, 
If I'm risking 50 cents, I'm looking to make 50 cents. If I'm risking a dollar, I'm looking to make a dollar. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Learn how to take a position in a stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move and that's what you need. That's what you need. And we could see that in the market actually today. We could see that but the carry through in a gap in the market, again, it could be a bullish gap, could be a bearish gap in the market or some stocks between tonight and tomorrow. These enormous moves happen in one direction and happen fast. Momentum trading can be very profitable and that's the whole point. So who creates the momentum in the gap? Again, institutional money. That's who's in charge. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are nothing gaps. So I'm not necessarily doing every gap all the time. There are many, many gaps every single day. I'm not sitting here rating thousands and hundreds of stocks every day. I narrow it down to a watch list and then those are the ones that I'm rating. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. That's what we saw in NVIDIA. Actually, that's what we saw in BA, but it was to the downside, okay? So understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. Again, because things don't go straight down, things don't go straight up, and change, change does happen in stocks, change happens in the market. And that's how you have to know where the power of money is to flow to pay you. Again, we're not buying and holding stocks forever and ever and ever, and I'm not doing swing trades. When I'm saying momentum, you take the trade, get the move, get out. That move could happen in several, seconds several minutes in a day trade it could fall into the close in a day trade but i'm probably not holding it into the close in an option it could happen ideally in 24 to 48 hours it could happen in a couple of days it could happen in a week but the golden gap 26 point rating system is the meat and potatoes of everything i do that pinpoints the footprints of institutional money of exactly where something's going to go <clears throat> and again if you're someone that's new if you've never traded you really don't even know how to read a chart. I've taught beginner people. I have. So again, you might have a learning curve with the platform or looking at, 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 at how you're doing everything, just some of the basics. But you're going to learn my strategy from the beginning about how I look at charts and how I look at gaps. And that is extremely, extremely valuable. Sometimes people come to me in trading, again, for longer than I'm alive, and they have bad habits or things that don't work, and then they have to break those habits or change those habits in order to do something different. So I don't think, it's not like it's you're gonna do better if you've been trading a long time, or you're gonna be better if you do better if you're a beginner. Everybody comes from a different placement and a different point, and you have to learn what you're doing. And again, you have to take the amount of money that you have, and you have to think about your risk when you're doing it, and then you have to get out when you're up. That's another important key piece of it. So here's the, one of the NVIDIAs we did. We did a, quite a few. And these weren't cheap. So one contract, the NVIDIA calls we did on Monday the 4th, these 860s that expired on the Friday, one was $14 for one. So these were a little pricey, but they paid. So again, 129% return investment, great return investment in this NVIDIA. Again, it was a call. If you did one, and risked 1400 you could have made $1,800. Let's take a look at the chart. Three, four, three, oh shoot, I don't have it in here. Oh darn it, I don't have it. I forgot to put the knitting video chart in. If we, oh no, I had it back here. No, I didn't. I was a different chart, I think. I'm sorry, I don't have it in. You'll have to look it up on your own. If I, if I, if I have time at the end, I'll pull it up. Long story short, NVIDIA, went to 975 it was on 315 so that stock just exploded and i thought i had this chart in here i'm sorry but anyways if i have time i'll pull it up at the end anyways if you go back and look it rallied pretty much consistently for three weeks straight and if you go back to the beginning the very very beginning of the year in january nvidia if you bought the stock nvidia in january if you just bought calls in it or just bought it straight out it was in the 400s. Crazy as that sounds, you absolutely could have done it. And March 15th, the stock had the most recent high, which was close to 975. And again, we're not in anything with this. I'm sorry, I thought I had the chart in here, but this trade worked. It was a nice trade. And again, this was a call. Just want to show you that sometimes we will go long. Um, here was the Foot Locker. I was talking about the Foot Locker. Stock close here, gap down. Again, this is momentum. This is an example of control to the downside and an example of a gap 
So we were talking a little bit earlier about trading, consistency, how to get a high win ratio. Like I have well over 70%, you have to have an edge. So that's gonna give you the edge over one trader versus another. And again, it's momentum and it's shorting because so many people don't short or they prefer to go long, I don't know why. Even in a bullish market, we're making the kind of money that we're making, mostly shorting. And again, when you think about it, it makes common sense because stocks drop fast, they fall fast. Again, we get an edge because we're shorting when many traders don't understand how to short. Will the market eventually fall and break this year in 2024? I don't know. I don't know. I do think it's going to depend a lot on interest rates, the Fed. And again, we may not get all the answers that we want today at 2 o'clock. We may not get all the answers we want until June. Course towards by the fall of this year, I think by June, you know, I don't think that the Fed is going to be able to camouflage if they're really not going to drop rates this year three times if they are able to do that today. But every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, two, big moves of the day, three, early confirmation of my bias and the move between 9.30 and 10. Again, I want to get in and out fast and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. Again, we're trading on the one minute chart and we're also doing the options, but you can't trade options in the pre-market. You enter the trade into the open. You can only trade options during the live day, even though sometimes and most of the times I send the trades out in the pre-market in the morning and the options, I might send a trade out at 7 a.m., a BA put or something, and then you take the trade into the open. I don't trade the pre-market or post-market. Um, do gaps only happen in the pre-market? Why not trade the pre-market? Gaps happen overnight. Could be in the pre-market, could be in the post-market. Good question, Don. Why not trade the pre-market? Because you can't put stops in, because it's the wild, wild west, because you don't have the same volume, because it's very spready, because you could press the button to get in and not get filled. You could press the button to get out and not get filled. Lots of reasons. Plus, I'm doing the analysis in the pre-market, and you're not going to make any more money in the pre-market than you will on the live day. So that time in the morning, <coughs> excuse me, that time in the morning is when I do the analysis. You're not going to make any more money by getting in in the pre-market. And in fact, something could reverse. So I could get up in the morning and rate a gap. I'm just making this up here. Say it's early. I get up early. 6 a.m. Boom. I rate it. If I do something in the morning, it could reverse against me and not even hold the gap. Remember, the market doesn't open till 930. So the pre-market is ours. I don't want to trade that. That's when you do the analysis and then the other reasons I gave as well, but good question. Anyways, the whole meat and potatoes of everything I do, how am I getting these results? How am I making this kind of money? The rating system, that's it. I just had the March class this past weekend. It is eye-opening for every single solitary person that, teaches, that I teach that does my class, even people, again, that have been trading for a long time. Why? It's like a window into my brain to see how I'm looking at something and how I'm analyzing something and seeing where it's going to go. And again, that's the genius in it. I'm not predicting the gap itself. I'm predicting the move it's going to have after I see the gap. And that's what you're going to learn how to do. And the gap rating is on the daily chart. So the 26-point golden gap rating system helps you pick which stock to trade each day. And maybe you don't do anything one day. Maybe there isn't any good gaps. Then you don't trade. Then you take the day off. It's better than losing. you got to have more winners than losers. you got to. That's the only way you're going to be able to make money. Legit. It pinpoints ahead of time which stock will have the move in the day with volatility to trade. Having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and a stock to make the correct decision. And again, if having a TV on or listening to commentators hurts you, turn it off. Having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias because that's the name of the game of how you're going to make money. You can't short something that's rallying. You're going to lose. Having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. Okay, and you do have to set those goals for yourself. And a checklist is a plan of action. Everyone that puts money in the market should have a plan of action and a checklist. On a professional level, all high income career specialists have checklists. So again, it's something where a lot of people are trying to trade for a very long time and they tend to just waste years and not getting anywhere with it. I decided very early on I wanted to do this and I just threw myself into it. it took me longer than I thought to figure out my system. It took me almost three years. But once I did, I never looked back. This is a great quote from Warren Buffett. There's one investment that supersedes all others. Invest in yourself. Trading is an investment. Paying for a class like mine is an investment. The time investment. My class is on a weekend. It's all day Saturday, all day Sunday. It's 
worth it to invest in yourself. And if you're not willing to invest in yourself, how do you expect yourself to be successful? You have to be the one that invests in yourself and you have to believe in yourself too. And you need to get value out of your education. If you pay for a class and you don't get anything out of it, even if it's cheap, you lose on bad trains and you lose the money that you paid for a cheap class. Again, what's the point of that? You're getting nowhere. It's like taking 10 steps forward and then 25 steps back. So think about it. Again, use your brain and make good decisions, not just about trains, but about education as well. So if you come to me, you're going to learn the checklist. Empower yourself today. It's a whole system to learn how to trade. And again, it's two days. I teach the class in a full two-day course on how to strategically find stocks and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's April 27th, 28th, 9 to 5. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. It could be anywhere in the world. The trends class is included with the combo, which is April 30th. The combo tuition is $74.99. So it's three days of classes, two classes for $74.99. And I am doing an Easter special that is going on until Easter. I would wait till then to sign up because I'm going to be away for the holiday. Um, the Happy Easter special is going on through March 31st. You will get the trading room subscription free for one year and the newsletter subscription free for one year with the class with the Golden Gap combo if you sign up again by the 31st. Any questions from anyone about anything? And I'm done a few minutes early. Any questions from anybody else? How's everybody doing? Listen, if you're interested, if you have questions, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. You can go to my YouTube. You can watch some of the trading room videos there, some webinars there too, and some really fun videos of New York. And if you're interested in anything else or if you have any questions, you can also email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Thanks so much for having me. Happy Easter. Sherry, are you there? Great presentation, thank you. I think Sherry's having lunch. <laughs> hello, hello. Well, I can keep talking. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> I hate to go over uh, other people's time. Sorry okay. about that. That's okay. Oh my, I, didn't I didn't get myself the... off of mute. Yeah, it's okay. I didn't want to go into the next person's time. Oh.